Hello, Hi. Motion Wears. Today is our great pleasure to invite our good friend, Miss Tom Heifer, back. Hello, Mr. Heifer. Happy Valentine's Day, Dr. Liu. Today, we will discuss the question, does MIT discriminate against males? So, first of all, MIT is a private institution. Is it okay for them to discriminate against people because of their sex? Is that legal? So here is what Title IX says. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. So the answer is simple, no. Not if you take federal funds. So. Does MIT receive federal financial assistance? Well, that's an easy one. They get lots of federal financial assistance every year. Here are the sources, DOD, DOE, HHS, uh, Department of Defense, NASA, and other over $500 million every year. They do receive plenty of financial assistance. So, what does it take to get into MIT? Well, a big part of it is SAT scores and what SAT scores are required. Well, according to MIT, here are the two SAT scores, and this shows the middle 50% score range of admitted students, the 25th to the 75th percentile. So let's look at math. So SAT and math, you have to get between a 780 and an 800 to be in the 50th percentile. But since 800 is the highest grade you can get, what that really means is that 75% of the students are in that range and only 25% of the admitted students are below 780. So what's the range of math scores for males versus females? Maybe females just do much better on this test. So here's a graph that shows what percentage of men versus women score above 780, very 25th percentile mark in math. So here is the graph for 2015. And down here at the bottom here are the math, SAT math test scores with 200 being the lowest and 800 being the highest. And this shows the ratio of men versus women that get each of these scores. So MIT wants you to get a 780 or an 800, which are these marks right here. So in this particular year, 780, about one and a half times as many men got that as women, and 800, about twice as many men as women got that. So overall, about 1.7 times as many men as women got the required scores for man. So is there a bias ratio? Are they favoring women more than men? Well, this shows 20 years worth of admissions data from 2001 up to 2021, and it shows the number of male applicants, the number of female applicants, how many men got admitted, how many women got admitted, and what the percentages of men versus women getting admitted. So let's look at 2021, a little over 21,000 men were applied, about 11,000 women applied, uh, only 665 men were accepted and 700 women, so the admission percentage for men was about 3.1%, and for women, it was about 6.1%. So from that, we compute the bias ratio, which is shown here. So for each year, you take the ratio of men versus women getting accepted, and we see that the bias ratio in favor of women is over two for every single year. So if you apply to MIT, as a female, you're twice as likely to get in as if you're a male. In their admissions process, they say, this is their webpage, we don't just admit individuals, we admit a class. 
it's as if we're choosing an 1100 person team to climb a very interesting, fairly rugged mountain together. Sorry, the ovals wound up in the wrong place. We are emphatically not looking for a batch of identical perfect climbers. We are looking for a richly varied team of capable people who will support, surprise, and inspire each other. So here are the questions. This is an 1100 person mountain climbing team. Well, on teams, people have roles. There's a quarterback, there's a tight end, there's a kicker. So on this mountain climbing team, which one is the Sherpa? Which one is the person in charge of the ice axes? Which one is the rescue team? The notion that it's a team is ridiculous. When I went to MIT, I knew the people in my fraternity. I knew most of the people on my varsity teams and maybe a dozen other people. So how many of these people even know each other? This is not a team. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a great admission process. So how is this all working out? Well, first let's look at old school admissions products. So here are some old school admissions, MIT grads. Let's see who they were. So here's Richard Feynman, probably the foremost physicist of his day, well-known, world-respected, Buzz Aldrin, one of 12 men to walk on the moon. Kofi Annan, UN Secretary General, all admitted before we started worrying about teamwork. Well, how's the, how's the new admission process working out? What are, how are the recent MIT grads? What are they known for? Well, here are a couple. So here's Sam Brinton. He was the LGB community's nominee for the U.S. Undersecretary of Energy responsible for nuclear waste, requiring high-level security clearances. Unfortunately, he was convicted of having at least twice stolen women's luggage from airport turnstiles. Now, incidentally, he's the one who's not in the dog costume, at least in this picture, but he's not even the most well-known. The most well-known recent MIT grad is Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of the crypto exchange FTX, convicted of massive securities fraud and money laundering. So those are the members of the new team. So. If you are a male and were rejected by MIT and you feel that it was unfair, here is a website that you can go to. It's HTTPS fairadmissions.org. And you will come to a form that looks like this. And you can enter in your name and your information and what you feel was unfair about your rejection. And that will go to an organization that will evaluate that and see whether you would like to participate in a lawsuit to end this unlawful discrimination. So I'm going to go through this one more time because just putting in fair admissions at MIT in Google will not get you to the website. Google is not bringing that website in any of the first page search results. So here it is, I'm gonna repeat it. So it's fair admissions, mit.org. You will have to type that directly into the URL bar in your search program in order to get that. But if you do, you will get the form that I just showed you. So. That's what you can do if you would like to end the unfair and illegal discrimination against males at MIT. That's all I have for today. Thank you.
Yeah, I think it's it's going to be crazy. The DEI admission. We don't want to lose our face for our doctor, for our pilot. Right. Well, don't misunderstand. We want as many women to apply to MIT as possible, and we would like as many qualified women as possible to be admitted. But we don't want qualified men to be discouraged or discriminated against and to not fulfill their full potential, both for themselves, but as you point out also, for the country. So that is the objective of this lawsuit. Well, I have one further announcement, and that is that I am preparing another video for your program. I have some additional results in the climate change initiative that I've been pursuing. And I now have quantitative results that I can share with your audience on a brand new way to reduce global warming while we are still alive and without <laughs> investing trillions of dollars. Sounds very interesting. I look forward to hear that.